Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Nate. I'm with Community Christian Fellowship. I'm one of the teaching pastors here at the church. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, if you're coming back because we're doing this series during Holy Week, welcome. Uh, we're in day four and where we left off was Jesus was in Bethany. Uh, so now we pick up the story as he sent uh, John and Peter ahead to Jerusalem to the upper room for uh, to make preparations for the Passover. And so that night, something odd happened, something that they hadn't expected. Jesus decides that he's going to wash the disciples' feet. Uh, this was odd because a king washing a servant's feet was something that never, ever happened. That's something that you just don't do. So much so that Peter decides to be, to be totally honest, Peter, uh, and open his mouth and push back on the Lord and say, Lord, you're never going to wash me. But then Jesus reminds me, he says, listen, unless I wash you, I have no part with you. Why was this important? Well, this was important because if these guys were going to represent Christ, if these guys were going to represent the kingdom of heaven, he wanted to make sure that they were, they were accurately representing the kingdom of God the right way, right? The kingdom of God was about being a servant. It's not about what you can get. It's about what you're giving. And so Jesus at some point tells him, he says, listen, you know, this is the last time, fellas, we're going to get together. The last time we're going to eat and drink until the meaning is fulfilled of the kingdom of God, the whole purpose of why I've been sent. You're like, what does that mean? Basically, what that means is Jesus' death would mark the new beginning, the new covenant, right, between the creator and God's greatest creation, mankind. Remember back in Genesis 3 when we broke that covenant, that that relationship between God and mankind was broken. Uh, and so Jesus is the answer for that, that restoration to, to reconcile mankind, that relationship that once was. This is the new covenant. And the new covenant was just around the corner, that if you believe in Jesus Christ and you follow him, that you're saved. Uh, and so the bread and wine, uh, while common at the Passover, uh, were representing something far greater at this point. I mean, the bread symbolized his body as a sacrifice for the nation. The wine represented his blood as an illustration. And Jesus was, being the, was the sacrificial lamb to take away the sins of Israel, but not just Israel. The entire world was able to take part in this. And as the lamb of God, uh, Jesus was about to fulfill the Passover by giving his body to be broken and his blood to be shed in sacrifice, freeing us from sin and death. You're like, well, what does that mean? What does that mean, freeing me from sin and death? Well, guys, mankind, uh, when, we, when we sin, uh, we, we've already broke, the relationship has already been broken, but mankind is incapable, hear me say that, is incapable of fixing what we've, what we've broken. Back in Genesis 3, we broke the system right? Uh, and we have ever since then, because sin came through and death through sin, uh, been able to fix that, be able to, to get ourselves out of this mess. And so that's what God has done this entire time. Now this new covenant is before us. This relationship with Jesus is before us. And all we need to do is accept it. The, for the wages of sin is death. This is what Romans 6.23 says. And you're like, what are you talking about? Think of it like a, like a dartboard game, right? You ever played darts before? Except this is a high stakes game of darts. The rules of the game are simple, right? Hit the bullseye every single throw. Now, I don't know if you've ever played that before. I don't know if you've ever thrown darts before. If you've ever had to hit the bullseye every time before. Now, if you miss, you're out of the game. And I mean forever. Right? Never, never to play darts again. Now, could you do this? Would you be willing to bet your life that you could do that if you said yes? That's what makes it a high stakes game, right? Not that you're banned from darts, but for your life, and your life is on the line. Folks, that's what the combination of sin and death means here, right? If you, if you miss being perfect in everything that you think and everything that you say and everything that you do, then it's game over. That's it. And that's what Jesus was trying to explain to his disciples, you know, um, that he was, he was going to step in and be their sacrifice. And he is our sacrifice and our inability to hit the bullseye in life. God's, uh, God's mandate is that we're to, to do, think, say everything perfectly, and we can't do it. But that's why Jesus stepped in. He was going to pay for our, he was going to be our ultimate sacrifice. But why? Well, because we, you know, we owed God, you know, for the, for the, the comment that we made to maybe that loved one. We owed God for that, that honest dealing or dishonest dealing that we maybe we did with, with one of the customers that we had. Why? Because we missed the target of being perfect. Because perfect is the standard and we can't meet it. You say, yeah, but that still doesn't answer why Jesus had to die. You never explained 
what has that, what's that got to do with me? I don't even like darts. And then you say, yeah, man, but you said even yesterday that, that Jesus was aware of everything, everything going on around him. You know, so, so the question really is, you know, what's going on here? You know, why did Jesus have to die? Friends, that's a simple question. He had to die because, so we could experience heaven. And that's what it comes down to. He's making, he has made preparations to stand in and take what we deserve. Folks, if you're expecting that at the end of your life that you're going to see heaven, if you're expecting that the loved ones that have gone before you are going to be there and you're going to see them face to face, you're going to need Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. And what a glorious day that's going to be. Friends, if you don't know Jesus, I urge you, I implore you, I ask you, give us a call, send us an email. This was one of the greatest lessons uh, leading up to uh, Easter Sunday, that the resurrection of Jesus is what it is all about, folks. But Jesus making himself available to be accepted is also what it's about. You have that opportunity to do that. Let us help you do that. Give us a call. Send us an email. If you, have, if you need us to pray for you, for you, we're happy to do so. That's what we're here to do. I want to thank you for your time. Come back tomorrow as we, we dive in a little bit farther. Tomorrow's Good Friday. This is where the tables kind of turn a little bit. This is where, where things shift a little bit uh, in the sense of, of mood. You don't want to miss it. Thanks so much.